In this lesson, we're going to talk about some different types of holes that often show up in technical drawings and learn to read and understand the whole notes and symbols used to describe them. When a hole cuts all the way through an object, we call it a through hole. A hole that doesn't cut all the way through an object is called a blind hole. Blind holes have a specific depth, which is indicated on drawings using the depth symbol. Anytime a hole appears on a drawing, it needs a few dimensions. Holes typically need two dimensions to correctly locate them. These location dimensions tell the distance from a reference edge of the object to the hole's center. Manufacturers need to know where the center of the hole is in order to drill it in the right place, so locating a hole by its edge isn't very helpful. This note indicates that the diameter of the hole is one quarter of an inch. The word through indicates that the hole cuts all the way through the part. Normally, if no depth is given for a hole, we assume it goes all the way through the part, even if we don't see the word through on the hole note. This note indicates the diameter of the hole is 3 eighths of an inch. The next symbol indicates the depth, which is 3 quarters of an inch. Since this hole doesn't cut through the entire part, we call this a blind hole. A clearance hole is a hole large enough for a fastener to slide through without resistance. A pilot hole is a hole that's smaller than the fastener so that the threads on the fastener bite into the material. Pilot holes are often necessary to make space for the fastener so it won't break or split the material. When screwing two pieces of material together, it's common to use a combination of a clearance hole and a pilot hole as shown here. The clearance hole is drilled through the first piece and the pilot hole into the second. In this way, the threads of the screw bite into the second piece and the screw is allowed to spin in the first piece. This causes the screw threads to pull the two pieces tightly together. A countersink is a cone-shaped opening at the top of a hole used to recess a screw head. A countersink is indicated on a drawing with the countersink symbol, which looks like a wide letter V followed by the diameter and angle of the countersink. We would say that these holes are countersunk holes. A similar hole feature is a counterbore, but in this case the opening at the top of the hole is cylinder shaped. For fasteners that don't have a cone shaped head such as nuts and bolts, a counterbore is used to recess the head of the fastener below the surface. The counterbore must be large enough to accommodate washers or wrenches used to tighten or loosen the bolt. Counterbores are indicated on a drawing using the counterbore symbol, which looks like an open, upwards-facing bracket, followed by the diameter and depth of the counterbore. In these notes, the first line contains information about the hole, while the second line contains information about the countersink or counterbore. This note indicates that the diameter of the hole is one quarter of an inch and the depth is three quarters of an inch. The second line indicates a countersink with a diameter of three eighths of an inch and an angle of 82 degrees. This note indicates that the diameter of the hole is three eighths of an inch and the hole cuts all the way through the part. The second line indicates a counterbore with a diameter of one half inch and a depth of one quarter inch. Tapped or threaded holes are holes that have threads cut inside them. The threads use a specific size and pattern to receive a specific type of threaded fastener. Fasteners and holes with different thread patterns will be incompatible. Tapped holes are indicated on drawings using thread notes. Thread notes can become a little complicated, so I'll try to break it down simply. The thread note takes the place of the normal hole note and includes all the information about the size of the hole and the thread pattern. There are many different sets of standards when it comes to thread patterns, but the two most commonly used threading standards are ISO, which are metric thread patterns, and Unified National Threads, which are U.S. customary thread patterns. Unified National Thread Patterns look like this. There's a lot of information given in one little thread note. The first number is the major diameter of the hole. 
The second number is the TPI, or number of threads per inch. A higher number here would mean more, smaller threads closer together, and a lower number would mean fewer, larger threads spaced farther apart. The letters UN indicate that these are unified national threads, and the letter C indicates the designation coarse, but you might also sometimes see F for fine. The number two indicates the tolerance of the thread, or how much space is allowed between matching pairs of threads when they're spun together. Two is by far the most commonly used tolerance. The letters A and B are used to signify whether the thread is internal, as in a hole, or external, as in a bolt. A thread note might also include a depth note to indicate that the threads stop after a specific depth, but it's usually assumed that the threads cover the full depth of the hole. ISO, or metric threads, look a little different than unified national thread notes, but they provide much of the same information. They will start with the letter M, which indicates a metric thread. Then the number that follows is the hole diameter in millimeters. The next number is the pitch of the thread, or the linear distance from one thread to the next, in millimeters. Note that this is different from the unified national threads, which indicate TPI instead of pitch. The next number is a grade of tolerance for the thread, which can be a whole number from 3 to 9, and the letter that comes last is H or G, H indicating no allowance between mating threads, and G indicating a tight allowance. With this basic understanding of holes and hole notes, you should be able to interpret hole notes in a technical drawing and answer some questions about what you learned. Good luck!